So somehow you've convinced yourself that you don't care for seafood. You don't like fish. Well, I tell you what, this recipe might just be that game-changing conversion you need. So let's jump right into the recipe, friends. I cannot wait to show you what I'm about to do to this red snapper. I'm just scoring it right now. So far, I have trimmed the fins but left quite a bit of it on for presentation reasons. Scoring it because I want all the seasoning, all the amazing things we're going to throw at this fish to reach even the bone, all right? So this fish is gonna be so, so, so good, yes. And this is how I like to score it, cross hatch. It looks so pretty. Onyawa, I thank you very much for this Old Bay seasoning. It is amazing. I am also adding a little bit of vegetable bouillon and a pinch of mixed herb blend. Friends, use any blend of spices and herbs you love to cook with. Just make sure you show the fish lots of love, friends. You can't go wrong with the seasoning choices. Now I have some vinegar. I am just going to spray the fish, the guts of it. Yes, and the guts have already been removed. So I'm spraying the vinegar on there and the vinegar is going to bring that much needed tang, that sour taste that works so well with fish. I'm going in with vinegar because the, the vinegar also cleans out the fish really well, leaving it with a very inviting aroma, friends. So if you don't like fish, especially the aroma it comes with, and your fish, by the way, if it's fresh, very fresh, it must not have any smell to it. So keep that in mind. But the vinegar is needed so very much here because again, tang works with fish, right? Even your tartar sauce is full of tangy flavor. So now I am dusting the fish with the seasoning, herb and spice blend we put together in the beginning. And I'm making sure that it's also entering all of those scoring incisions we made add it in. You want to make sure this fish is taking it all in. Now prep all of your fresh produce. We'll be talking about those pretty soon, but now we're going to put together a marinade or a sauce. I have Dijon mustard, the herb and spice blend, vegetable bouillon, minced garlic, and we need citrus in this recipe because it just freshens everything up. So we're bringing in the juice of a whole lime or lemon if that's what you have on hand. Then for some more acid and sweetness, we bring in distilled vinegar. The same one we sprayed the fish with. Just a few splashes of that and then go in with your oil and that's pretty much all she wrote. Give it a good, good mix and set it aside. Next step is to deep fry the fish. I am deep frying in a stock pot and you'll see why pretty soon. It's all about presentation, friends, so we're heating up the oil and I'm going to dust a little bit of all-purpose flour onto the fish. And that also helps with presentation, but it helps also crisp up the skin of the fish. Another important role the all-purpose flour plays here is that it leaves a very light, thin, protective covering on the fish, leaving the inside nice, moist, and juicy. The only way you must enjoy your fish, crispy skin, moist and juicy inside, seasoned well, well, even to the bone. It is time to deep fry this fish, friends. The flour also now becomes a non-stick coating on the fish. Now place the fish in creating a slight bend. And because you're using a stock pot, it will force the entire fish to conform to that bend, which is amazing for presentation. So keep on watching. And it's totally okay to spoon on the oil if the fish is not completely submerged in the oil. The reason it's not doing that is because of the way the fish is sitting, you know, it's creating more height. So uh, even though you're deep frying, the oil might seem like it's not enough and that's totally fine. Now I go in and fetch some of the seasoned fish infused oil into a wok because the next phase of the cooking is going down right this minute. So I have three large onions I have thinly sliced. And yes, this recipe is inspired by Senegalese Gambian Ivory Coast Yassa, friends. So you need lots of onions. 
and the fish is already done frying. We fry one at a time, no need to overload your pot with all that fish. Fry one at a time. And that prominent curvature in the fish, that's exactly what we were going for. Friends, beautiful. And look at those scoring marks we made. Not only are those good for presentation, but they're also very important functionally. You'll see. Sister Madame is multitasking here, so the onions are also cooking on medium heat. And we stir occasionally to make sure that they are cooking evenly, friends. And yes, the second fish is also frying simultaneously. Hey there, hey there. Take it easy on us now, fish. Y'all know you're looking good. Don't rub it all up in our faces, though. <laughs> Yes, so the onions are cooking on medium. Now I go in with a little salt to season this layer. And yes, it's turning color and that's exactly what we want. So now I go in with a little bit of ginger. Yes, Yasa usually does not require ginger, but I wanted just that hint of ginger flavor and it worked, friends. So although it is an optional ingredient, just a little bit for me worked. So you might try it too. The onions look amazing and the last fish is done frying. And back to the onions and that light golden color is exactly what I want. So now I'm gonna go in with that marinade sauce we made before, pouring it on the sides of the wok because do you notice that some sugars are sort of sticking the sugars from the onions so we need to deglaze. I also follow up with about a quarter cup of water for the deglazing action and also to create a little more volume in our sauce. Also, make sure that you're tasting as you cook for seasoning, friends, and add a pinch of salt if you need to, season to taste. Now, these pitted green olives do bring a seasoning factor to the sauce, so I didn't need to add any more salt. These are Fresno chilies that I have cut into very small rings, and they are so fragrant, this cream chili without the heat, friends. So the olives have also gone in, and we're thinking ahead, so we know we're going to be garnishing with this flat leaf parsley, giving it a rough chop and setting it aside for later use. Now I will be adding some chopped tomatoes whose seeds have been removed. And I know that Yasa does not require tomatoes, but this recipe is only inspired by Yasa. It isn't Yasa. And the tomatoes play such an incredible role here. You know why? It brings all that juiciness, that freshness, a little more of that fresh tasting tangy flavor. And it just really balances everything out. It also creates volume. I seasoned it a little bit with some salt and took it off of the range right away after adding it and stirring it in I just heated it up I did not cook the tomatoes at all so when you take a bite and you get that burst of sweetness fresh tasting tomatoes all oh, friends all oh, friends you just must try this recipe and yes you will love it I am confident that you will love it Sprinkle some parsley on there and set it on that dining table next to all those amazing other dishes. And yes, this is a statement maker. Yes, friends. I served it on this day with some coconut steamed rice. Mmm. Mmm. I don't have the words right now because my mouth is watering again. <laughs> Friends, I thank you all so, so, so much for watching. I really, really hope that these recipes, which are really easy to replicate, are inspiring you and are bringing you some fresh new ideas for this season. Yes, so those scoring marks, see the functionality of it. We didn't struggle trying to get the fish from the bone. We literally just picked it right off of the bone. So the fish is pretty and then it's also easy to eat. <laughs> so you got to enjoy your moist fish which you were able to pick 
very easily from the bone, but then you also had the tail for a chip. Hey! <laughs> when I say best of all worlds, <laughs> You must try this recipe as well. Thanks so, so much for watching, for your love and your support. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is chop time. And here in Anaba's Kitchen, Shop time is always yes friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here. <laughs>